Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make a tutorial on how to use prop types in React. So basically, prop types is a is a library that is endorsed by React itself, which basically allows you to define types for your props. That's that's pretty self-explanatory, but the thing is that if you're not using TypeScript, for example, you still want to have a way to determine if your your props are being received correctly because for example if i if i'm passing a prop that is supposed to be a string and i pass a, a number or a boolean that kind of stuff then our project might not it, it might cause bugs right to our application so we need to make sure that we are actually receiving the correct types for our props so that's where prop types comes in and also it is i believe it is easier then it is simpler to understand than if you have to go and learn TypeScript or uh, any other way of, of defining uh, types for your for your props or for your variables. And it is actually pretty simple when you get the gist of it. So I'm gonna teach you guys exactly how to work with it. You can see right here, the example I have is a very simple application. The only thing it does is it, d it displays a list of uh, five different people, um, each of this, each person actually is a component that I created here. So I have a component called person and this component is very simple. The only thing it does is it receives props as you can see and basically it comes over here and it, it defines a div called person and inside of it I, I display information about this person. This information includes a name, an age, their email, a boolean asking if they're married or not, and also a list of possible childrens, right? So if they, if they are like, if, if they have childrens, then they display it over here. For example, um, Jack Davis has two two kids. Um, Dwight Schrute has one kid. Um, Jim has two kids and I, I don't have any kids, right? So this is the idea. And what exactly, like how exactly does prop types come into play here? Well, currently, I don't have any, I'm not defining any types. So for example, I could come very easily over here and just say that my name is a number, right? I could come over here and change this to, I don't know, uh, 82, 87, not like this, like this, 87, save this and there wouldn't be any issue. You can see right here, it's displaying. If I go to my console and I kind of come over here, you can see there's no issues, nothing is being logged. It, it's just accepting that we passed the number instead of a string, right? Same thing goes with, with other stuff. And the, the, the main issue comes, for example, with children, because children, if you remember, is, a, is, a, is an array, right? It's an array of, of like children's names or an array of strings. But imagine that I came over here instead of passing in an array, I could just pass like a random string. Let's see what happens. Now it breaks. The reason why it breaks is because inside of our person uh, uh, component, we're trying to map through a list. And if we don't pass an actual list as the children, then it doesn't work. So this is why you, you, you should define your, your prop types because it helps a lot finding bugs. It helps a lot and not breaking your application, right? So how exactly do we get started with prop types? Well, first of all, you need to install the application or not, not the application, the library. You have to come over here. I'm gonna open up the terminal and you basically just have to write, um, if you're using yarn, you can say yarn add prop types like this. Or if you're using NPM, you can just write um, NPM install prop types. And after you install them, I already installed them into my application you can very simply come to the component where you're accepting the props. So in the case, um, the component that I'm accepting the props is the person.js. And you can import prop types here at the top. So import prop types from, and you can just say from prop types, as you can see right here. So now that we have prop types imported, what you can do is you can come here at the bottom and you can call for your component, so person in this case, and just say that person dot prop types, like this, prop types, and you set an object. Why do you set an object? It's because inside of here is where you're going to actually de like define uh, all the different uh, types for each of the variables that exists in your props. But the thing is, um, if you realize to do this, we have to have access to the components like name, the components instance. So in order to do this, you have to create a variable like 
a, a variable to represent the component and later on uh, you need to export it after you actually define the prop types so for example in this case if you were to basically have it like this instead of exporting at the bottom if you were to have it like this it, pro it wouldn't work because you're exporting it before um, the actual creation right so just do it like this it doesn't change anything but uh, inside of here we're going to actually define the types for each of the props that we have so what exactly are the props that we have well we have here um, for each user we have an, a name and by the way let me just change this because it was a string so we have a name so what we can do is we can just say name which is the the variable as you can see right here and we can set it equal to prop types dot string and basically this says that we, need, we are only accepting strings and then if you want to give a, a type for age we can say prop types dot number so this is how it works right similar to many other different types of um, validation libraries or um, just in general type checking uh, libraries um, basically it just works like this you set the variable email and you just set prop types and the actual type so string in this case um, then for married let's say is married um, probably it's a boolean right so let, let's just say prop types dot bool and one that is really interesting is children right so how exactly do we define an array well with prop types you can just do it like this you can say children is equal to prop types dot array for no no array of and inside of here you can just say prop types dot string so what you're doing over here is you're saying okay children is an array of strings this is this is how you actually define an array in prop types right and if we save this you'll see that this actually works if we refresh our page over here it doesn't show anything let's go to our console and in our console it doesn't show anything uh, with prop types you can obviously set ways to check if there were any errors but most importantly it will log the error in your console so let's check again to see what would happen if we change this to a number right if we came over here and said we want to make this equal to 98 instead of a string you'll see that now it says warning filled prop type invalid prop name of type number supply to person expected string so it is very very straightforward what you're doing it is great for catching bugs because this is something that a lot of people have to deal with um putting different types for their props so it is great that they have a very nice um warning system right um let's check again for like any other thing for example let's check and add a, a, an array of numbers over here so let's add 98 35 354 that kind of stuff it should be a, an array of strings but we're putting an array of numbers and now you can see um if we refresh our page again yeah filled prop type invalid prop children zero which basically seen, says it's grabbing the first element of the array and it's saying of type number supplied to person expected string because it was supposed to be a string instead of a number so this is the idea of how you actually build it but i want to show a little bit more uh, an, exa an example that is a little bit more ex more advanced which is for example, person is an object, right? It contains, each person contains all this information. So why exactly are we actually just uh, passing our props like this? There must be a better way of doing it, right? And the better way of doing it is just passing an object inside of here. So instead of having it like this, we could have just had a, a prop called person, for example, and just pass an object instead of here, like person object, something like this, right? But imagine, how would we actually validate this using prop types? Well, right now I'm going to convert all of this into objects and just pass it as one single prop. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. Okay, everyone, so we're back here. And as you can see, what I did is basically now our, our components only accept one, one prop, which is person. And for, for that prop specifically, we just pass an object, right? So why do we do it like this? It's because in most cases, this is how, this is how you would do it. Um, you would be querying some information from an API, getting some information from an API. It would be an object, that kind of stuff. So you wouldn't actually receive just input stuff into a component like we were doing before. This is a more clear base case, or not, not base case, but a, a clearer example. And you can see right here, we have our objects being displayed like, like they were before. But how exactly do we validate this using prop types? Well, first thing we have to do is we have to come here to person and change this to person instead. Or we can do like this, um, person. And now you can see that person is an actual 
uh, prop that it's accepting, right? As you can see right here. So we, we're not we're now correctly ac accepting person. And we can just copy this and paste it throughout our application instead of props um, like this. But now how do we validate person? Well, we can do it very simply by just leaving this like we had before, because we're still going to use this. But now we can say that person, the, the prop person um, is equal to prop types dot shape. And inside of this, we can pass an object. And inside of the shape, we can just paste our property that we had before. The reason for this is because obviously person is an object, right? We know that person is an, is an object. It's but the thing is that if we just say that person is a prop type dot object, then we're not actually validating anything inside of person. So to do this, we can just use the shape property, which exists in many different libraries. Um, it's very similar to what other other libraries, other uh, systems use. But basically, you define a shape for this object. And you can see right now that uh, as, as it appears over there, a uh, person is a shape containing all of these properties, right? And it, it assumes that this is an object. So that should work. And now if we save this, and we go here to our application and refresh our page, you can see that we get no errors. But if we individually change one of the one of the objects, so I'll, I'll set is married for Dwight to be a string, right? If we came over here, you'll see that it still gives us the invalid prop uh, warning, which is great because it means it's working. So that's basically the idea of how to use prop types. Um, I would recommend using it even if you're using another system to validate your application. Even if you're using TypeScript, in some cases it is nice to have to have a prop type um, defined. Um, it isn't it isn't as good as having TypeScript all over your application if you're building something that is more that is that should be larger or should accept more people. It is a larger project. It's supposed to be for. Uh, to, to serve to a lot of people in, in the internet, for example, then I definitely recommend using TypeScript over JavaScript. But the thing is that prop types isn't supposed to replace TypeScript. It's just a way to validate your props. That's that's all you, you, you have to know for it. And that's basically it, right? So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below what you want to see next. Um, I'm posting every single week, three times a week. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe and leave a like. And yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.